to start the Camaro. It's been sitting out here for a while and I just brushed all the snow off of it that I could but I haven't started it in a while and right now it's probably five below so hopefully it starts. It's super cold blooded but we'll give it a shot. So this thing started and it looks like a little makeshift covers actually worked pretty good for the last month or two sitting out under the snow. So it's gonna drip dry for a little bit, but we're gonna work into the back of the car. So hopefully most of it's gonna go to the front anyways. All of you non-believers out there that have said, well, what if it rains? Look at that, perfectly dry. So first order of business mm, yep, is... Yep, got that one with my hand too. <laughs> Ryan's changing out the valve covers and gaskets right now. And what he found is that they were actually only finger tight to begin with, which is not surprising, I guess, but it surprised him. But on this car, there's been a lot of stuff like that. A lot of the wiring has already been cleaned up on it since I bought it, but there's still some stuff left over. And what a lot of people have commented on is the junk valve covers. I did find a set on Facebook Marketplace locally for 20 bucks. So this is the most cost effective way I could actually think about buying them was used. So I got a set of valve cover gaskets and new valve covers. So we're gonna get rid of the old rusty ones. But the point of today's video is actually gonna be to take these UMI on-car adjustable double heim joint, I guess if you can call them, or maybe they refer to them as their spherical rod ends. The lower control arms and pan hard bar that are off of the Trans Am are gonna get a second life on the Camaro. So this should be pretty straightforward. Brian's working under the hood right now. And what I'm gonna do is jack up the back of the car and just simply replace the hardware. I'm just gonna match them up to the factory length. So being the car's at stock ride height, it's not gonna alter the vehicle's wheelbase and it won't change how the rear end is actually centered from the passengers to the driver's side of the car in the rear end uh, wheel wells, I guess you could say. So this should be really straightforward. It's something you can do on jack stands in your driveway or garage if you just have really simple hand tools. It's just a few bolts. You swap out pretty quick. And maybe tomorrow, if it's looking like the weather is gonna be clear out, we're actually gonna go try this car out with the new lower control arms. There's a racetrack out on a lake right now, a couple miles from my house. We're actually gonna go get some tire chains, put them on the front and back wheels of the car, and go see what this thing does out on the ice. So hopefully this all works out and we can have a fun video tomorrow. Here's a quick view inside of the cylinder head and it is really clean in there. 
The last third gen I had was just full of crud. It was not nearly as well taken care of. So surprisingly, this one's actually really clean. And it looks like we got a set of 333-882 cylinder heads. I'll take a quick look at that number for small block Chevy cylinder heads and see what the internet has to say about them and I'll finally know what we've got. Update time. So Brian got the front driver's side valve cover all installed with a new gasket and everything and even cleaned up the wires which actually look a lot better. I probably wouldn't have done it but he went the extra mile and they look good. The passenger side is all taken apart. Uh, same cylinder head casting on it and we're cleaned up and pretty much ready to go for the install on that as well. I just got the clan hard bar out. The factory bolt on here actually swelled up enough on this side where I had to beat it out with a sledgehammer. I'm actually kind of surprised it came out. I was just about to cut it. If you go to UMI's website, they offer new hardware for the lower control arm bolts and the pan hard bar. And this is why. Water sits inside of the bushings and it'll corrode it to your bolts diameter is actually way less than it should be because it's rotting away inside. So I'm gonna run this one for the next few days but I'm gonna get two new pan hard bar bolts coming. This one's super corroded so it's actually in really bad shape. The new ones you'd get are more like this. Those are for the lower control arms obviously, but you can see it's actually lost like 10, 15% of its material there from rust. So that kind of sucks, but it actually came apart, which is good. So I'll get the new pan hard bar installed after make sure it's the same length by tossing a bolt from one end to the other. And we'll keep cracking away on it here. So right now I've got the, or Brian's got the takeoff pan hard bar from the Camaro and from the Trans Am next to each other and the setup on the bench with the lower control arm bolts ran through it. So what we're doing right now is actually making sure that the adjustable pan hard rod is the same length as the factory pan hard rod because what it does, I think I said earlier in the video, is it actually centers the rear axle from left to right in the vehicle. Now because this car is a stock ride height, we actually had to adjust it a little bit. It was on a lowered car before, so it was actually a little bit off. But it looks like he got it all dialed in, and it's pretty much ready to get thrown back on the car, I think. So we'll get this tossed back in and then start working on the lower control arms. Pretty much done under the hood, and I'm going to keep working on the back of the car, and hopefully those lower control arm bolts come out a lot better than the pan arc rod bolts did. So we got the rear lower control arm on the passenger side and it actually went pretty easy. This is actually, looks like it's gonna be the same length as the factory lower control arm, which if you remember watching on the last video on the Trans Am about how to go over setting up your pinning angle, wheelbase, and actually adjusting the pan hard bar and everything, I went over that. So like we thought in the prior video, these are actually at the factory length. So we can actually just take this one and throw it right onto the car. We don't have to change anything, which is good, I guess. We'll make sure the other side is the same. Uh, it should be. And we're pretty much done with the rear suspension install after that. So luckily this has gone a lot better than the pan hard bar. The lower control arms on these cars and fourth gens are stamped steel with a rubber bushing insert and a steel sleeve. These ones are actually in pretty good shape. A lot of times on cars that have been driven pretty hard, you'll actually see that the bushing is all cracked and maybe this is wallowed out or it's not tight in there. The bushings on this car are actually pretty good, so we'll probably notice a little bit more stiffness or you can probably feel the rear end engage a little bit more when you're under power. It's not going to be as noticeable as a car that's got really shot bushings. So you might have different experience with your car or the results may vary a little bit, but this is actually in pretty good shape overall. The biggest benefit we're going to have is now we have a totally solid joint and any flex that's in this stamped steel control arm is now gone with the UMI or control arm. So still worth doing in my opinion.
so the lower control arm installation is done. It actually went way better than the pan hard bar did. As you can see, I was actually out of undercoating, but what I did as a temporary measure was take some flat spray paint and really coat the inside of the rear wheel wells. So the lower control arms and pan hard bar are all installed. Everything's looking good and it should be straight. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, Brian and I are gonna get the wheels on the car, get those torqued down and put the car on the ground and make sure we're good to go for tomorrow. Under the hood, things are really cleaned up with the new valve cover. It's not quite as rotten, but I think it was $20 well spent. Not only that, now we know it's not gonna leak or anything like that. Um, both of the valve cover gaskets, were, they were both really dry and all the bolts were just barely finger tight. So this thing was beyond its useful lifespan. And thanks to Roadkill and David Freiberger, shout out to them. I did a little wire tie, wire separator trick. So everything's pretty well cleaned up under here. I think all we're gonna do tonight is start it and burp the coolant system because we did lose quite a bit of coolant after we moved the hoses out of the way for an easier installation of the valve covers. But that's about all for tonight. We're gonna to try our best to find some tire chains tomorrow. Otherwise, it may mean that I just need to get a new tire and stud it at the end of the day, but this one's almost out of tread. You can't stud something that's that low. It just doesn't work. You need good tread on them because they actually sit in the tread of the tire. So there's a couple ways we can do it, but Regardless, we're going to find a way to get out on the ice, whether it be with chains or just on the tires. Should be good to go for tomorrow. So we'll see you guys in the morning. So it is the next day and we ended up getting a set of tire chains from like a fleet supply store. That are actually for a four-wheeler. We called around quite a bit and I was looking for car stuff, but my buddy here found these ATV chains that actually fit absolutely perfect on these. So there's gonna be pretty crazy tread on it and we actually got it locked with one link to spare. So if you wanted to do this to your car, I've got a factory tire size and factory wheels. Here it is, they're your Peerless four link spacing ATV track tire chains. Part number is 106-4355. So if you wanna do that, that's what you can do it with. Little bungees were separate, but we're gonna take these off and go drive down to the racetrack, put them back on quick and we we're gonna go do some hot laps. So we'll see you guys out on the lake. So we're trying out the new UMI Performance tubular control arms out here on Lake Superior where it is frozen right now and there's a little ice track set up and we're all equipped to be able to have a little bit of fun on it. So let's see how she does. <laughs>
side should be good. Alright guys, so this is something that I did not anticipate. I honestly didn't set out to like really wreck anything if I'm being completely honest. This sucks, but what I'm going to do is put a little bit of white paint over it right now. So hopefully I don't have any corrosion issues coming up through the winter or anything like that. The car does have rust and it's got damage all over it. It also has a pretty bad repaint job as far as repaint jobs go. Decal's in the wrong spot on the door, so there's a number of things that are not good about the car to begin with, but in all honesty, I did not set out to wreck the car, but the chains did come apart, and there was no stopping it when I was at speed, so. That happened on that side, that was not totally foreseen. This side's 100% fine, so I'm pretty happy about that. Doing this really wasn't supposed to hurt anything, but as you can see, I took a little bit of damage on it. But overall, I would say that that was definitely worth doing because I had a ton of fun. It's something I've been talking about doing for years and years and years. Big thanks to Brian for giving me a hand putting it together the valve covers and the new valve cover gaskets and the rear suspension parts. The UMI stuff held up great. I could tell that the car felt more positive under turning when I was out on the streets, on the highway, or whatever you might want to refer to it as. Stuff is in there looking good, so this is a good step towards having a really good driving car. At some point, I'd imagine I'm going to LS swap it, so you got to keep that in mind when you guys are watching the videos and commenting. I know it's kind of hard on the T5 and the small block, but that stuff isn't going to be in here forever. So, hope you guys liked today's video. It was a lot of fun shooting it and filming it. Fortunately, we took a little bit of damage, but it could have been a lot worse. Um, otherwise, there's my latest update on it. Hopefully you guys liked today's video. Give it a big thumbs up or share with a buddy that you take out their car, maybe with studded tires, and uh, have a little bit of fun out on the ice. So, hope you guys liked today's video. We'll see you guys in the next one.